Oddly enough, in the 15 years of me reviewing cars, this is only the second Mini that I've driven. The first one was in 2015, and it was a four-door Cooper S. Now we have the 2022 hard top John Cooper's works. Let's go ahead and dive into what all of that means. All right, before we jump into this car specifically, let's go through kind of uh, the models and trims available from Mini. Again, as this is only the second time that I've driven a Mini, and it's been a while since I've gone through it. So you have three basic models when it comes to the Mini Cooper. You have the Cooper, the Cooper S, and the John Cooper Works. The John Cooper Works, which we have here, is available in both the two-door hardtop and convertible. Obviously, we have the hardtop here, but if you're looking at just a Mini itself, you can get that in a two-door or four-door configuration. So if you've chosen the John Cooper Works as your model, your trims are classic, signature, and then iconic. This is the iconic, so it is the top of the line trim. And just to clear up any confusion on the John Cooper Works, that is uh, basically Mini's racing division, kind of like what Mercedes AMG or BMW M would be. So it's the top of the line, most sporty vehicle that Mini makes. So let's dive into this one specifically. All right, let's first touch on the exterior design here. Obviously, it's a Mini. It has that traditional Mini look. It has the same look it's had since it was reintroduced, basically. This is the John Cooper's work. So we do have the blacked out badges. We have the gloss black surround on the grill. You got some of the red accents and obviously those John Cooper works badges all around. The color that we have here is Moonwalk gray metallic. I think it looks okay. We've got the red roof, red side mirrors. If you haven't looked at uh, a Mini Cooper's configurator, you can choose the color of roof based on a few different options, as well as obviously the color of your car. In addition to the round LED headlights, this is a pretty simple and clean design that's emphasized by its larger hexagonal radiator grille, which together with its large side openings ensures air supply for the drive and brake system. In the John Cooper's works, we also have modified side skullets on the front side panels and the diffuser in the rear apron, which have been redesigned. The John Cooper works comes with a sporty suspension setup with special manufactured Brembo brakes. Standard, you get 17 inch John Cooper works wheels, but on this one, we have the 18 inch light alloy wheels that are available as an option only on this John Cooper Works. And they are a two-tone design and you can see those red Brembo brake calipers behind those wheels looks really good. Again, like I said, we have that red roof and you can see the full length moon roof and sunroof there. All right, and let's take a look at the rear here. So we do have the blacked out badge here. We have that John Cooper Works badge on the hatch. You have the classic British tail lights on here super cool nice little detail touch you have that rear diffuser that i was talking about that has been redesigned and those center mounted exhaust And while we're here looking at the exterior, let's quickly talk about the dimensions of this small vehicle. The total length is 152.8 inches. The wheelbase is 98.2 inches. So it is a pretty short vehicle. The height is 55.7 inches and the total width is 68 inches. And now keep in mind that is for the two door hardtop. Different versions are gonna have slightly different dimensions. It's, uh, again, it's a small car, but that's what it's going for. It's a mini. And speaking of a small car, let's go ahead and pop that hatch. All 
So I did live with this car for a full week while reviewing it, went and did grocery shopping in it, carrying around camera gear in here, basically all the day-to-day -day lifestyle stuff that I would do. And it worked just fine. As you can see, the camera gear is really packed in. Our total cargo volume is 8.7 cubic feet. So that is really tight on space, but you can fold those rear seats down if you need more space. And I'll talk a little bit more about that rear space volume when we jump inside. But before we do, let's go ahead and check out what's under the hood. All right, and under the hood here, we do have a two liter four cylinder twin power turbocharged engine that pushes 228 horsepower, 235 foot pounds of torque, and should do zero to 60 in about 6.1 seconds with the six speed manual transmission, which is what we're rocking here. You can also get this option with an eight speed Steptronic Sport transmission, and that should net you a zero to 60 around 5.9 seconds. So obviously the eight speed Auto is gonna allow for a faster zero to 60, but uh, six speed manual, much more fun. So with that, let's close up the hood, jump inside, talk about the interior and the tech, and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, we're inside the Mini Cooper and uh, there's a lot going on here in this small vehicle, so let's get a tour around. Starting with these seats, super nice. They're nice bucket seats, nice bolstering, John Cooper Works badge right there. Really nice materials, but even with this being a small vehicle, these are really comfortable seats, comfortable driving position. We do have the full black interior with gloss black trimming. All these vents are really cool and easily adjustable. It's a nice aesthetic throughout the vehicle. The start button, just like you might suspect if you've seen a uh, Mini before, is here in the middle. So manual transmission, foot on the clutch, foot on the brake, and just push it down. Lots of noises to start up. And we do get this really nice 8.8 .8 inch screen here. It's a very wide screen in this uh, setup. And the full setup is really cool. As you perform different functions, your lights on this surround will change. There's quite a bit you can dive into through this system. The price sheet says it has Apple CarPlay, although plugging it in does not ever result in getting Apple CarPlay. You can play your phone media through the USB. And it does have both a USB type C and USB type A charging ports. But all in all, it's a cool and unique setup. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you do, everything works just fine. You have some touch capacitive buttons here. You have some physical buttons, a physical knob. Your AC and heat controls are physical knobs down here, which work out just fine. And physical buttons down here, including our heated seat. And then you have these toggle switches down here, including the start stop button. Uh, you have your engine auto start off toggle, traction control toggle, and your driving mode toggle. So you have a sport mode, a mid mode, and a green mode. And these look really cool, but uh, they don't feel as cool to toggle or to touch as they look, which I think was one of my gripes with these in the previous vehicle that I drove. And that type of toggle switch is mimicked at the roof as well for things like lights and your sunroof. But moving back down, here's our gear shifter. Again, manual shifter. It is a six speed and your reverse pattern is way over and up. And we do get our reverse camera with some sensors, but it doesn't have the 360, although you really don't need them in this vehicle because it is so small and easy to see. And down back a little bit further from the shifter is your infotainment control center. So you've got a knob to switch between things, your menu button, quick buttons for map, media, navigation, communication options and back. You have a 
traditional manual e-brake. And you have a decent sized armrest here with a little bit of a cubby. And this one is filled with a phone holder that barely fits my phone with the case on it. And as you see, it also does charge wirelessly the phone. So that's pretty cool. My only gripe about this is that this is the only place you can really store your phone. And if you've got your phone here, obviously it's not being hooked up to the infotainment center unless you're Bluetoothing it. But it's also hidden away, which for some people is a great thing, but uh, <laughs> I like my phone to be in a cup holder, but with my case, this just doesn't fit in the cup holder. There's a little shelf here you can kind of throw it into, but it's fallen off and into the floorboard before. And if you look at the door, there's a little pocket here, but it goes all the way through. So you can't just put your phone in the pocket of the door like I do on a lot of cars. So unfortunately, if you don't have your phone in that uh, cubby, there's not really anywhere else for it to be, which is a bit annoying for myself. But moving along, you can also see the steering wheel here. And this is the John Cooper Works steering wheel. It is leather wrapped, nice stitching, big and beefy for the hands. You've got some buttons for toggling different things on the steering wheel. Not too much clutter. Although I will say if you put your thumb here and drive when you're turning sometimes, you can actually click that button, which seems like a bit of a design flaw. Behind the steering wheel is the driver information screen. It's actually three separate screens. So you can toggle through different information, although it is a bit clunky to do so. You also do have a head up display and it's one of those that pops up the glass on the dashboard and then projects onto that glass. And again, you would think it would be configurable on either the where the glass sits or where the information sits in the glass. But uh, if it is, I couldn't find it. And from where I sit, my eye line, I don't really see the information. I have to duck down more to be able to even see it. So maybe there is a way to adjust that, but through my time in this vehicle and looking, I couldn't find it. And quickly before we move on, the back seats, again, they're pretty tight. It is a small vehicle. It's more of a two plus one instead of a two plus two because nobody's really sitting behind me. But uh, if I have one kid up front, and put another kid in the back, uh, it can work out. And this seat does fold and scoot pretty far forward for easy entrance and exit. But if you are driving this thing with kids and stuff, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, let's move on to the drive. Let's get this thing out on the road. All right, now obviously the party piece of this vehicle, the John Cooper Works, is its sportiness. It does have special tuned suspension to be more sporty than the regular Mini. And John Cooper Works has years of experience in making racing vehicles. <laughs> so it's definitely a ton of fun, especially in the corners. So cornering in this thing is done very well. It's very pointed. very easy to turn and through those corners you do have good power to get up and out of them obviously your power band doesn't last very long but it's nice and low <laughs> and can be a lot of fun to drive but even beyond it being fun to drive it's nice for everyday driving nice and comfortable even with the manual transmission the clutch is easy to use it's easy to switch gears. The seats are comfortable. The driving position is perfect. The steering wheel is very nice. So even if you're not buying this to put it on the track, which most people probably aren't, it's still a very good day-to-day -day vehicle. There are still obviously some quirks and annoyances with the interior that uh, bug me, but nothing so major that it would prevent me from wanting to buy one if I was in the market for this type of vehicle. You do have the different driving modes and I've basically kept it into the mid mode. 
during most of the week that I've had it, but you can shift it into that green mode, which is obviously an eco mode, helps you save on fuel economy, which is already pretty good in this vehicle. And obviously you can get those numbers because of the engine and it's such a small and light vehicle, but you also have a sport mode. So you can toggle this up again and we're now in sport mode and that does tighten stuff up a little bit. It does make the throttle response even that much quicker and makes that exhaust sound a little bit better as well. But if you're gonna live with this every day, it's nice that it has that mid mode and, and green mode for day-to-day -day driving and then you've got that sport mode for when you're really wanting to have fun. And again, I didn't engage it too much during the week that I had it because there's not really any need for day-to-day -day driving, but when you wanna have fun, It does ramp it up a little bit. Ready, set, go. Not the best at launching. 60. Zero, sport mode. All right, guys, with all of that, let's quickly talk about the price. So your base two-door hatch is going to base at $23,400, which is a really good price. If you're looking at the John Cooper Works specifically, that base is at $32,900. But this one with a couple of extra added bits has a full MSRP of $40,750, and that includes the destination charge. So forty dollars for a small compact vehicle sounds like a lot but this does a lot and compared to its competition is a reasonable price for everything that you get here but let's go ahead and jump out and i'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap the video up there all right guys so after a full week of driving the 2022 john cooper works mini i have to say i'm sold i like them uh obviously for a bigger guy like me it's a little bit tight and for a family guy like me it doesn't really make sense at all carrying multiple kids in this thing not recommended, although I managed through the week. But it is a blast to drive, it's lots of fun. Lots of heritage there. Definitely a great community of enthusiasts, even here in Texas where big trucks dominate. I was approached by a few different uh, mini enthusiasts that really love this car. So with that, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the mini John Cooper works. Be sure to go check out TXGarage.com for more written reviews from a lot of different authors, as well as event and news coverage. And with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.